Hello everyone, welcome back. It's that time of year again. We are talking about the best products of 2022. So this year I decided to break up my favorites into um, categories. So this video is skincare and I'm going to have makeup, fragrance, hair care, you know, everything's gonna be broken up. So it's a little bit more digestible because if I were to talk about everything in one video, it would just be way too long. So we're talking about skincare. I am pre-filming this because I have travel coming up for the holidays. So there may be some like December releases that I really love that may not make it in here. I always feel kind of bad for those releases, but you know, these are general favorites that I've loved and that have stuck with me either like in my routines or in memory throughout the year. And for reference, my skin type is combo. I'm oilier in the summer. In the winter, I'm more, I'm still a little oily in the T-zone, but more normal and sometimes a little bit dehydrated. My skin concerns in general are around soothing, calming, anti-aging or well-aging, whatever you want to call it. And I also do have um, some redness and pigmentation. So that's my skin type. But even if you're not my skin type, I do think there are products in here that will be helpful for you, that may be appealing to you, and that may even work better for you than they do for me. Um, and I'll be specific in terms of my recommendations for particular skin types in the video. So without further ado, let's get into the best skincare of 2022. I'm going to go in the general order of application. So I'm gonna start with cleansers. And I do wanna say these are not only 2022 releases. These are products that I just happen to love this year. And of course, I do stand by all of my old favorites. So for first cleanser, I actually only have one that really stood out to me this year. I definitely have old favorites. I love the Jordan Samuel After Show treatment cleanser, but there's a new cleansing balm in my life that I'm actually almost out of, and I'm very sad about it. And that is the Naturium Purple Ginseng Cleansing Balm. So this is such a nice cleansing balm. It's very, very effective and very quick working in breaking down makeup or SPF. It is very affordable as Naturium is. And this is on the light side of cleansing balms. It's not super, super emollient. It actually melts down really quickly into a relatively thin oil consistency. However, thin doesn't mean it's less effective. It's actually, I feel like even quicker working because it melts down so quickly. And it's fragrance free. It's great for all skin types, whether you wear makeup or not. Sometimes it's nice to have that extra step of an oil or balm cleanser to really break down any dirt or any waterproof sunscreen that's so Sort of thing and it's a huge tub too this is um three ounces so this has lasted me a couple of months i'm already um at the very very bottom of it i've hit pan if you will and i will definitely be using this again in the future and i love that i now have uh, an affordable cleansing balm that i love as much as my higher end first cleansers by the way, I got my hair done this week and I really like it. I um, toned it a little bit more cool toned so it looks darker even though I didn't dye it darker on the ends. And then I got um, a lot of really shaggy layers and a little curtain bang. My hair grows freakishly fast. It's one of my superpowers. I love it and I hate it because any haircut on me only lasts like a month and then all the layers have grown out. So I decided to go a little bit shorter but I'm into that like really textured 70s shag sort of look. Let me know what you think. <laughs> For regular cleansers or second cleansers, I have a couple of different options that are different textures. So for my gel cleanser, I really, really loved the Dr. Loretta Gentle Hydrating Cleanser. It's a gel, but it has such an interesting ability to stay on the skin. It's not foaming, it's not sticky, it's not too thick, but it just has a way of gliding on the skin so that you're really able to work it into the skin without it breaking down or just slipping off your face. And it does feel hydrating after you use it. It also has a really lovely um, natural cardamom scent from, I think there's cardamom extract in this. So it's a really refreshing cleansing experience. And I think if you like a gel cleanser or even if you have dry skin and other gel cleansers are too stripping for you, you will really, really like this one. I definitely leaned a lot into hydrating cleansers this year. Um, you know, I'm still oily, but I think my skin type is changing a little bit. I turned 32 this year. I'm feeling like 
like I'm leaning a little bit more into combo, especially in the winter months. So I have two cream cleansers that I've absolutely loved. I actually did a video on hydrating cleansers earlier this year, and I think all of these were mentioned in that video. The first cream cleanser that's like a straightforward cream cleanser that I loved is the Stradia Velvet Cleansing Milk. This is a really creamy, beautiful consistency. It's actually a great cleanser if you only have sunscreen on because it has the ability to break down any waterproof sunscreen or sweat, grime, things like that. And it gives you that creamy cleanse, but it doesn't leave like a lotiony film on your face. I really hate cream cleansers that are overly emollient or leave kind of that oily feeling on the skin. This doesn't do that, but it just leaves your skin perfectly bouncy and cleansed at the same time. And it's from Stradia, so it's very good for gentle skin. There's no fragrance in this at all. It's just a great all around option. Um, I have one in my shower. I have one open by my sink. It's a must have for me. The other cream cleanser I loved this year was from Jordan Samuel Skin, and they released the Matinee Cream Cleanser. So Jordan Samuel Skin makes some of my favorite cleansers of all time. I love their original Matinee Cleanser, which is a gel cleanser, but they made one specifically with a creamier texture. This is a little bit less of a straightforward cream than something like this. This is more of your like dry skin cream cleanser. This one has the addition of silt in it, which is really interesting. It gives you, it's almost like a gel cream hybrid. Because of the silt, you get a slightly more thorough cleanse than a regular cream cleanser, but it still gives you that hydrating, milky experience. And I've just loved it. I think the texture is so, so nice and really, really perfect for combo skin types like me. So those are my cleansers. Let's talk about vitamin C. I am actually kind of sad about this category because both of the serums I'm going to mention are not currently in my routine. They're empty. The first one is the SkinCeuticals Silly Marin CF. So this is a vitamin C, L ascorbic vitamin C. I think it's 10 or 15%. And you also get the addition of Silly Marin, which means there's 0.5% salicylic acid. I talked about this a lot this summer because it was perfect for my oily skin. It gave me all of the benefits of an L ascorbic acid vitamin C. So it gave me pigment brightening, just skin brightening in general, as well as antioxidant protection. But that touch of salicylic was perfect for my oily skin in the summer because it helped keep my pores clear and it helped keep some of the oiliness at bay. And it's not a high enough concentration to really be exfoliating. For example, a 2% salicylic acid is where you generally see like Paula's Choice 2% BHA, that sort of thing where you're actually exfoliating. The 0.5% concentration was just a really, really happy place for my oily skin during the summer. And I did feel like it helped prevent um, breakouts or any of those like hard bumps where if you have oily skin, you know what I mean, they get kind of hard under the skin and then they come to the surface. Um, it just helped me manage my skin type so well. So I will definitely be picking that up again next summer. It was just perfect for my skin type. For something a little bit more hydrating and moisturizing, there was one that really surprised me. It's much more affordable than the SkinCeuticals one and it's the Naturium Vitamin C Complex Serum. So there's hyaluronic acid as well as L-ascorbic acid, sodium ascorbyl phosphate, as well as some other antioxidants. This is not just your watery um, vitamin C, L-ascorbic vitamin C, classic like SkinCeuticals texture. This was actually a gel texture. Let me see if I can get any out, mm, sort of. There's like a tiny, tiny dot here. You might be able to see. It actually has a gel, bouncy, serum-y texture, and it gives you the benefits of hydration and that extra like drink of water for your skin. That actually really sticks around. So you get the l acid, but you also get the benefits of a hydrating serum, which is great because, you know, I generally in the morning use an l acid serum and then a hydrating serum and then a moisturizer. So this kind of eliminated the hydrating serum step for me and it was a two-in-one kind of product. And because of that texture, I think it's actually perfect for all skin types. If you're looking for a hydrating vitamin C, this is a really, really great option. I honestly flew through it because I used it 
like two to three pumps of it in the morning, maybe a little bit more than I needed because I liked the texture so much. Speaking of hydrating serums, let's talk about Essence's serums. I wanna start with lighter textures and then move into um, slightly richer hydrating textures. So I love a hydrating essence, a hydrating toner. I think that's the Korean in me. I just love that splash of hydration on the skin. And I recently, I think in a favorites video, talked about the Biro English Breakfast Tea Treatment Essence. So this is so beautiful. It's indulgent. Um, it uses the antioxidants of black tea to create this really beautiful essence. And I like to apply, you know, a couple of skins of this a night, meaning I do one layer, let it sink in, I'll do another layer. Um, as someone with combo skin, I find that lots of layers of hydration work better for me than like thick occlusive layers. So this is a biphase essence, meaning there's a creamy layer on top and there's a more watery layer on the bottom and you shake it up to mix them up and you get a slightly creamy fluid essence texture. Especially in the winter when my skin is feeling dehydrated, I'm in the heat, but I don't wanna add heavy layers, I really like layering something like this. I've also really, really been impressed with the Merit Great Skin Instant Glow Serum. I did a full brand review of Merit this year, um, in September, I think. It was right before this had launched. And I had shared some skepticism about, you know, a makeup company making skincare, and I have to say, I was wrong and Merit completely delivered on this product. So it's also kind of like the Biro Essence, a biphase product, but it's a very watery fluid texture. So it has a similar thing where you get the essence, the watery essence on the bottom, and the top layer of this serum is much more oily versus creamy. Um, that said, the texture is still very fluid and hydrating such that it's comparable to like an Asian beauty essence, I would say, even though it's called a serum. I was worried about this for my skin type being too oily. I wasn't sure if it was just going to feel like a facial oil, but it actually feels more like a hydrating essence. So if you're curious about the oils in this, they're very, very lightweight, especially once you mix it up and you pat it into your skin. It's light enough that in the winter these days, I even wear this like in the daytime under makeup because it doesn't disturb my makeup. It doesn't add too much greasiness. It just gives me a nice drink of water for the skin. The rest of these serums are mostly hydrating. Some of them offer antioxidants. Some of them have niacinamide, but generally I look for hydration and calming. Um, because I do use tretinoin, which I'll talk about in a little bit, I have really found that I'm bolstering soothing, calming, comforting ingredients in the rest of my routine so that the actives in my active products can shine. So let's talk about some more hydration. Um, Saatchi Skin this year came out with the Pro Resilience Serum, and this is their hydrating serum to the range. If you're not familiar with Saatchi Skin, it was founded by my friend Farah on Instagram, and she um, has done such a beautiful job of releasing very complex, thoughtful curations. So these are not your single ingredient serums. These are a higher end serum, but every single product in Saatchi Skin's line does um, multiple things. So even though this is a hydrating serum, it also contains antioxidants, hydrations, peptide and bioflavonoid repair concentrate. I don't know what bioflavonoids do, but I can speak to how this product feels. And it's a very bouncy hydrating serum. So gosh, this feels like such a waste to even show you, but I'm gonna show you. This is um, a very juicy hydrating serum. It has that glassy shine. It has a lot of bounce and a lot of slip. I think you can even see how like bouncy it looks on the back of my hand. The thing about this serum is that the bounciness doesn't just go away after it absorbs. I feel like it lends my skin bounciness and that like plumped up look throughout the whole day or throughout the whole evening. It's light enough that I can wear this under makeup. So currently in my routine, I do vitamin C, this, and a moisturizer. 
Um, or in the evening, I add this as a hydrating layer with a few other things, but it just gives me such a pleasurable experience that I actually do see on the skin. The thing I also love about Saatchi skin is that Farah brings together um, skincare science and traditional Ayurvedic ingredients in such beautiful cocktails of skincare. So you get that connection that Farah has to these traditional ingredients and also her passion for skincare and being a skincare nerd. And I just love seeing that come together in the brand. Speaking of bouncy skin and traditional ingredients, I have fallen very, very, very deeply in love with Soruazu's Concentrated Jing Ginseng Renewing Serum. If you're not familiar with Soruazu, they are a luxury Korean skincare brand. They're huge in Korea, but they're also very accessible here. And they draw on traditional Korean herbal ingredients called hanbang, including ginseng, which is really like the star of the show. It's beautiful for brightness, for plumpness, for really like glassy, translucent, but healthy skin. And um, the first product I fell in love with from the line is their First Care Activating Serum. It's a very lightweight, essency texture that sinks in. It gives you antioxidant protection. This is like a step up from that in that it the texture itself is very bouncy. So it has the ginseng smell, which is very herbal. And this was their... Um, Lunar New Year packaging. So the regular packaging is like their classic yellow, but it comes out in this really interesting bouncy texture. You can see it's much stiffer than the other serums that I showed you. This gives me really, really bouncy like baby skin. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. I like to use this at night and it just makes my skin feel very elastic and bouncy and firm and plumped up and radiant. I don't know how else to say it. It's a very experiential product, but I see visible results in the morning, especially in the wind in the winter time as we've been turning on the heater, things feel really dry. Um, it kind of restores that bouncy feeling to my skin. Then I have two sort of calming hydrating serums that I've loved this year. The first one will be no surprise to you. It's the Dew Skin Deliverance Serum. And Dew Skin has absolutely been a standout for me this year. I'm gonna talk about them more in a little bit. The serum I think is the standout of the brand simply because it is a very complex um, formula. So they use CBD to give you that calming experience, but it also has this milky hydrating texture. It feels very bouncy. It feels like it sinks in, but it doesn't disappear off the skin. And it also has a little bit of niacinamide for a touch of brightening, but it's not a high concentration at all. This one is actually empty, but I was able to squirt out a little bit. You can see it has that white milky consistency. And so it's kind of a creamy serum. It feels really calming on the skin, and I think it's a great addition to any skincare routine. I do know some people are sensitive to niacinamide, and I have another calming serum that I've absolutely fallen head over heels with, and that is the Paula's Choice Calm Repairing Serum with Ceramides and Beta-Glucan. So they came out with the Calm line, I just talked about this recently, in collaboration with Gothamista, Renee, on social media, I'm sure you know her. And this whole line is about calming skin. So calming rosacea skin, any skin with redness, any heat, any irritation, sensitive skins, whatever. This is hydrating and calming at the same time. I think this texture is a little bit richer than this, even though this is a milky serum, this is almost a little bit um, stiffer in consistency. You see it comes out as a gel and it kind of stays that way until you work it into the skin. And this has a nice slip to it. There are some um, silicones that give you that slippy feeling, not to the point where it's like a slippy moisturizer at all, but just enough to give you that smoothing feeling over the skin. And it's very, very comforting. 
especially if you use actives and you want to add something more soothing into your routine. I've just loved this serum and I use it during the day as well as in the evening. Another hydrating serum that I loved but I don't have to talk about is the In Beauty Project Slushy Serum. That was nice as a super lightweight hydrating serum. It's much less hydrating than some of these jellier, bouncier textures. It's more of a watery hydrating serum, but it was great in the summer. I think I just loved the texture of it so much because it comes out as a gel and the second you touch it it transforms into a watery fluid serum um, I also love the price point. I really liked a lot of things I tried from In Beauty Project and I'm really happy that they're at Sephora now because it's great skincare but also at a great price point. I also loved their moisturizer. The final serum is actually a good transition into moisturizers because I used it basically as a gel moisturizer in the warmer months, and that is the Summer Fridays Dream Oasis Serum. I don't have it to show you because I've emptied it, but it is a gel cream texture, like a light gel cream texture. I think it has ceramides, but really what stood out to me is the lightweight texture. It gives you deep hydration and like a bounciness to the skin, but it actually worked so nicely as a light gel moisturizer when I wanted that feeling of my skin being really hydrated and drenched in hydration, but not greasy and not oily. And it also wore really beautifully under makeup, under sunscreen. It's a very elegant formula. My only gripe about it is that I went through it so quickly because I loved using a lot of it. Um, so I would love to have that back in my life. I think in the winter, it's a great hydrating step, or if you have dry skin, it's a great hydrating step. But for someone like me, if you're oily combo, in the summer it may be enough and it give you enough hydration and do its job so well that you don't need something heavier on top. Actually, before we get into moisturizers, let's talk about actives. Um, it's a very small category for me this year because I've really been focusing on my prescription tretinoin. I use um, point 0.05% and that is a pretty average strength. I started last year with 0.025% and this year I worked my way up to 0.05. And I am someone who's very experienced with retinoids. I love my retinols, retinals. I will say my favorite retinol is the um, Medicate Crystal Retinol. They have a bunch of different strengths, but I wanted to go for the big guns and I have worked my way up very, very slowly over years honestly, to this concentration. Honestly, I don't think everyone needs this strength. If you can tolerate a certain level of retinol and that's your max, I think that's perfectly fine. The balance is that you wanna use active so that they're efficacious, but not so that they're damaging your skin barrier or that your adverse reactions are outweighing the benefits of a potent ingredient like a retinoid. For me, retinoids have been so helpful with breaking up pigmentation, like old, old pigmentation from cystic acne and things like that, that were not going away. And as I'm in my 30s, I'm thinking about anti-aging, and so that's why I use tretinoin. Of course, it is a prescription medication, so please um, go with the advice of your doctor and not my advice. This is just my personal experience. Even though I use tretinoin and I use it about twice a week, there are times where I find myself needing a little bit of chemical exfoliation because I have oily combo skin, I have a very active T-zone. Sometimes I need that in combination with chemical exfoliants to really get the benefits of my skin turnover and also get the glow. So I've recently fallen in love with another product from the Paula's Choice Calm line, which is the 1% BHA Sensitive Skin Exfoliant. So this is a lower concentration than what I've used in the past, which is the Paula's Choice 2% BHA, which I love. But now that I've amped up to 0.05% tretinoin, I'm finding that I need a gentle chemical exfoliation that I can use without fear of overdoing it. And this is perfect. So it has calming ingredients like allantoin. I think it also has the ceramides. It doesn't even feel like an active, like I don't get any sort of tingle, any sort of active feeling on my skin because it comes in this gel texture. So it's, it comes with a pump and it almost comes out like a gel cream. 
So you get the soothing ingredients as well as that soothing texture and that creamy texture as you're using a mild chemical exfoliant. It's honestly brilliant and it's just enough to keep my T-zone clear without tipping too far into over exfoliation. So um, I know skin cycling is very much the trend even though we've all been doing it forever, but my typical week will look like maybe using this on Monday, using this on Wednesday or Thursday, and then using this on a Saturday or Sunday. So every two or three days I'll use this or this and I alternate. I do have one more active product that really surprised me this year because it's not a category of product I've used very much in my life, but this product made me use it. So this is the Jordan Samuel Skin Mandelic Exfoliating Mask. This launched um, at the end of summer, I think in September, and it was perfect timing because it was just as I was realizing tretinoin alone isn't enough for me to fight breakouts. I need a little bit more exfoliation, but something gentle, like I said with the BHA. This is such a nice texture. It's a wash off mask. It's very thin and it has a bit of clay in there. So it's not as drying as clay, but it's almost like a clay meets a gel texture. Let me show you actually. It's just a squeezy tube and I'm not gonna apply it to the back of my hand, but this is what it looks like. So you get that dark color of a clay mask, but it's very, very spreadable and thin. I was really surprised how much I liked this because I can actually target mask certain spots without the full experience of a leave-on exfoliant if that's too intense. So I really liked using this down my T-zone like across my nose or my chin or on my forehead if I have a little bit of congestion in that area, but I don't feel like I want to mask my whole face. Or I'll target mask and I'll do like a hydrating mask around my face and then target certain spots with this mask. And you really need very little to get its effects. It's not going to feel active. It's not going to feel tingly. Mandelic is very, very gentle. It's even more gentle than like BHA. Definitely on the opposite spectrum of your super potent actives like glycolic, it's not gonna give you that tingle. It just gives you enough to feel like my skin is releasing a bit of congestion without overdoing it and respecting the skin barrier, which is what my year has been all about. So let's move into moisturizers. I mentioned I loved the Summer Friday Serum as moisturizer in the summer, and I have a couple of other favorites. These are both moisturizers that I think people with lots of different skin types will enjoy. The first is the Youth to the People Polypeptide 1 to 1 Future Cream, and this was a new launch by Youth to the People this year. They have some great moisturizers in their line. They have a gel cream. I love their adaptogen cream. This is something very different. So it comes in their green jar, and it has this pudding texture that kind of is a little bit stiff and then it melts on the back of the hand. I'm just gonna scoop some out with a Q-tip and I think you can see it really, oops, it really keeps its form. So when you apply it on the skin, it's very stiff, but then it goes through the best, most satisfying texture change. You're going to see it melt down almost like butter and melt into the skin and it gives you a lot of glide but it's not just like a gel cream sort of glide, it gives you a really creamy, yummy glide. This is a really nice texture because you can use a little bit if you want the moisture but you don't want heaviness during the day, or you can really pile it on for a really pillowy, comforting experience in the nighttime. It's meant to be a rich cream, a rich cream addition to their line. It's not as thick as their Dream Overnight Mask, it's not buttery like that, it gives you, um, it melts down into this like emollient texture. So it's been a major hit for me. I think there are so many skin types that will really enjoy the sensory experience of this moisturizer. And I feel like a lot of people didn't talk about it as much this year, but I really loved it. For my richer moisturizer pick, this is the other Dew Skin product that I love, and it's their Instant Angel Lipid Rich Moisturizer. So this is a ceramide forward moisturizer. You might say it's a little bit basic, but it does not feel that way. 
I mean, it's basic in the sense that there's no actives, it's not scented, it's not a very complex moisturizer, but the formula is lovely. So it comes in an aluminum squeezy tube and it's very pillowy, very rich. For me, this was a little bit too rich to use um, during the day in the summer, but it's a great winter moisturizer, a great night mask sort of moisturizer. Here's the texture. It just melts into the most elegant, beautiful, comforting, pillowy moisturizer. And this has been great for supporting my skin when I'm using actives. So I actually use this as my moisturizer under tretinoin because I know it will help mitigate any potentially irritating effects. But it's also great under makeup. If you have dry skin, you'll love this. Anyone I think will really enjoy this. If you're very, very oily, it might be a little heavy, but you could also just use a little bit less. It's the kind of texture that spreads very easily, so you don't need to use a lot to experience the plushy benefits of this moisturizer. Moving into facial oils, to be honest, I wasn't that promiscuous with facial oils this year. Um, I am not someone that uses oils unless it's winter, and so during the summer and stuff, I don't really reach for a lot of oils, but I do have two favorites for different skin types, and I think these were both my favorites last year too. Um, for the lighter end, I love and still love the Mila Clarity Oil. So Mila is an indie brand and they make this oil out of ingredients that they farm off of their own land. So it's very small batch, it's cold pressed oils. The thing that makes the Mila Clarity Oil so unique is that it's really great even for oily skin types. It has antioxidants from all of the cold pressed plant oils. It's lightweight enough to sink in, but hardy enough to feel like it's doing something for your skin. It's very skin calming, so if you have inflammation from acne or breakouts, redness, that sort of thing, it just is very, it's a calming oil for the skin. But I also love knowing that I'm supporting a small business that I really love and their packaging, I'll never get over it. It's a black glass bottle and it has this round gold cap. It also has this beautiful artwork on the back and that gold print. Um, this is a great option for all skin types, even oily skin types that may fear other oils. For something a little more heavy duty, I like the Mara Universal Face Oil. Um, this has algae and moringa. This is slightly richer, I would say, than the Mila Clarity Oil. And this is what I use on nights when I know my skin is parched, especially when it's really cold. Or for example, I'm traveling to Utah for the holidays to see my in-laws and I know it's gonna be snowing and my skin always goes through a bit of a shock. So I'm definitely going to be bringing this. It's also a beautiful bottle. It's got this dark blue glass with the dropper. Um, and this bottle's almost empty, which is unheard of for me. I rarely go through oils that much, and this bottle just has maybe like 10 to 15% left. So that's how you know, I really love it. Let's talk a little bit about eye care. For me, my target priorities are depuffing. That's probably my main concern is that I have um, puffiness around the eyes if I haven't slept very well, if I'm tired, if I haven't, if I've been eating too much salt, it just all shows on my eyes through puffiness. And also just general aging, well aging. So for puffiness, um, this is something I've used for like eight years and it's the Niod Fractionated Eye Contour Concentrate. Not everyone has the same response to this that I do, but if you have eye puffiness, it's perfect. It's a very um, watery fluid serum and it comes in a dropper. I literally just take one drop between my ring fingers and I pat them together and I tap it around my eyes, including on my eyelids. And it's a serum, so it sinks in really quickly, but something about this just subsides eye puffiness for me. And because I have hooded eyes and epicanthal folds, when my eyes get puffy, my eyelid folds drop or they um, kind of disappear. But I find when I use FECC consistently, 
I just, um, yeah, the puffiness subsides. I don't, I don't even really know what it is because I don't think there's caffeine in here. It just has the ability to hydrate and reduce puffiness. For straightforward eye creams, I have a couple of different ones. One that I really loved this year is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Eye Rescue. And it's an emollient eye cream that has a touch of retinol in it. So it gives you, um, a gentle retinol effect. It's not gonna be as strong as, for example, my retinoids, but just enough to help treat the more gentle eye area because the skin around your eyes is a little bit more sensitive and it's thinner. It comes in the glass jar and this is a refillable glass jar and this is the texture. It has a really um, melty, creamy touch to it. This is something that I use um, during the nighttime. I've also really been enjoying the Holy Frog Owl Multipeptide Eye Cream. Peptides are great for anti-aging as well. This is creamy, but not as emollient as the Charlotte Tilbury. Um, this is a little bit more of a straightforward, creamy lotion consistency. So that's what it looks like there. I know it's hard to gauge an eye cream by how it looks, but it does have less of an oily touch than the Charlotte Tilbury one. I will say I am gonna give an honorary mention to a recent favorite, and this is the Pharmacy Wake Up Honey Eye Cream. This is a new launch. Um, it just launched last week, though I've been testing it for about a month or so, and it's really, really nice. It's a kind of runnier eye cream, even though it does come in a pot it has a less stiff texture. So that's the consistency. It's just thinner in texture, but it also has an emollient feel to it. And this contains, um, it's pharmacy, so it contains their honey ingredients as well as vitamin C. I don't know what form of vitamin C. It does claim to be brightening, but of course with dark circles, they're mostly hereditary or structural for the eye shape. So you can brighten to an extent, but you can't ever fully get rid of dark circles. And I just wanna be honest about that, even though those are not a target issue for me, I just wanna be realistic about setting expectations. I also really, this is sort of a skin entertainment, like extra step sort of thing, but I really love the Do Skin Forever eye patches. So these are reusable eye masks. They have these little silicone gel eye masks. And it's really nice for when you need some extra soothing, extra depuffing, extra moisture, if you have the time. I like to take um, a healthy, generous amount of eye cream and then apply these. And the great thing is it holds the eye cream against the skin, so it prevents some of that evaporation that causes an eye cream, or that just normally happens as an eye cream sinks in. So if you really wanna make sure your hydrating the under eye if you're prepping for an event if you need some you know extra tlc these are great and they're also reusable so you can wash them if you take care of them they come in this little aluminum tin if you keep it in its little house it will last you a really long time so it's a nice more sustainable option to single use eye patches on to our final category which is spfs and you guys know i love my asian and korean and japanese spfs my chemical SPFs, but I actually have Asian and Western SPFs as well as chemical and physical filters. So let me start with my absolute favorite, which is the Claire's um, All Day Airy Sunscreen. Claire's is back, they've reformulated, and it's better than ever. This is SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. It's a water-based gel texture. There's no fragrance in here. It has all of the qualities that I loved about the original Claire's SPF, but of course they've reformulated, and it's just, it's so good. I'm so, so happy to have this in my life. So this is the um, texture. It's very lightweight. It sinks in very quickly. It's hydrating, but it's not greasy. It's all chemical, so it is sheer. You're not gonna get that white cast on all skin types. And I even like this better than the Beauty of Chozon SPF, which I know people love, but that one, um, I love it too. It can pill sometimes, depending on what other skincare products I use or what makeup I use, I have had occasional moments where it pills, whereas my Claire's SPF never, never pills. 
It might be because it's water-based. I don't know if there are silicones in the Beauty of Chosun formula. Nevertheless, that's a great one, but I have reached for this over that one this year. I did not think I would find an American SPF that I liked enough to use on my face because I always am buying my Asian sunscreens, but Naturium did it this year. So this is the Dew Glow Moisturizer SPF 50 Broad Spectrum. It has niacinamide, ethyl ascorbic acid, so a gentle form of vitamin C and it's SPF 50, thank God. It's all chemical, and it's um, homosalate, octosalate, and avobenzone. This is so elegant, probably the most elegant face sunscreen on the American market. It comes in the signature Naturium tube with a pump, which is my favorite, and this is a pretty stiff lotion. So it comes out like that, and then you work it into the skin. It is a richer cream formula, but it's all chemical. So once you work it into the skin, there's no white cast. It doesn't have that chalky feeling. What shocks me the most is that for an American sunscreen that uses these filters, you get very, very minimal sunscreen smell. You know what I mean? If you use American chemical filters, we're so behind, the FDA is so behind on approving these more advanced filters. These filters can smell pretty potent. And this one is super, super, super minimal. It's shocking. I also think this is moisturizing enough for me where I can skip my moisturizer because it does have that lotion-y consistency. It gives you a nice glow, but it's not greasy. It's not emollient and it doesn't break down throughout the day. So yeah, Naturium did it all at a great price point with all of the qualities that I look for in my Korean SPFs. I don't think it's as cosmetically elegant, but that's just the nature of working with these filters compared to some of the more advanced filters that Korean companies have access to. But on the American market, this is like the best I found. For those of you who prefer a mineral SPF, believe it or not, I have two options. I know, it's shocking to me too. I have been trying to explore more mineral options, especially because I've heard that tinted mineral options um, can be the best for fading pigmentation. I think just the actual mineral filter as well as the tint can aid in fading pigmentation over time. So I have a tinted and non-tinted version. The non-tinted version is the Summer Fridays Shade Drops Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Mineral Milk Sunscreen. And this um, is broad spectrum. This is so, so nice. I won't ever, ever say mineral SPFs are sheer because that's just not the nature of how they work, like physically, chemically, how they work. They do leave some white cast, but this has probably some of the most minimal white cast I've seen, and I've tried a lot of chemical or mineral SPFs. So it's very fluid, you can hear. It comes out as like a serum -y consistency, and it has a bit of a beige tint, but it is really runny, and you don't feel the chalkiness of this formula at all. You know what I'm talking about when you use like a zinc SPF and it gives you that grainy chalky feel. This is super elegant. It just sinks into the skin and it honestly feels like a hydrating serum. It's so weird. I know I have light medium skin, so you're not going to see the cast on me. I do think on deep skin tones, there is a bit of a cast. It's a minimal cast compared to some of the other options. So if you are looking for a mineral, I think this is a good option. The tinted version that I love is maybe even more skin tone specific because this is something that works for my skin tone. And that is the Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46. I love this stuff and on days where I'm just running errands or I might just be wearing some mascara and lip balm, I've actually been using this as like my base product. So this is zinc oxide as well as octanoxate, so it's a hybrid chemical mineral tinted SPF. Comes with a pump and let me show you what the tint looks like. So it does have a slightly golden tint. The tint is very, very sheer but um, it matches my skin tone really well. Although it is flexible across um, many different skin tones, I'm not sure about very, very deep skin tones because I've looked for tints that work for me. But this has a really interesting um, buttery, 
<laughs> it's not buttery in the way that it's thick, but it has um, a really like melty quality to it, but it just somehow like melts into the skin. There's none of that chalkiness. It feels really plush and cushiony on the skin. And it is also a little bit grippy. So if I wanna wear makeup on top of this, it's very elegant in that way. But if I wanna wear it on its own, it's also just enough to give me a little glow, to slightly even out some redness. Super sheer, nothing like an actual base product, but just, just a little bit of something, you know? And it's made the experience of using a physical SPF um, really pleasurable and kind of a hybrid makeup skincare product in and of itself. The thing I also love about this is that even though it's tinted, it's glowy, I'm able to use enough of it to get the protection I need, sufficient sun protection, without it looking too greasy or cakey or anything like that. It does actually set down and um, stay in place throughout the day and I'm able to use as much as I need without it looking clownish. Cause some tinted SPFs are too orange or streaky or I'm not able to use the sufficient amount without it sinking in. And this one actually sinks in. If it's too shiny with any SPF, you could also just powder it with translucent powder. That's a great way to manage them of the shine if you're not wearing actual makeup, but you want your SPF to stay in place. I lied, there's actually one more category, which is skincare devices. Um, I have to admit, I've been really lazy this year with skincare devices. I tried some that I really liked. I really have been enjoying the zip, but on most days, I don't have it in me to do a whole device routine, except for this one, which has been the one that I've consistently used this year, and that is my current body LED mask. So the current body LED mask looks like this. Um, it is a terrifying mask if somebody in your house sees you wearing it. I've tried a lot of LED devices and this is my favorite because it's this flexible silicone material, which means that you can wear it and apply it to your face and I have, I've added some extra straps on it for some extra security, but you can wear it and pop the um, power switch in your pocket and do things around the house which is why I use it because I can multitask and it's um, a passive experience where I don't have to be actively using the device or like give it my full attention. I can just wear it and do other things, browse on my phone, read a book, whatever. This is only red light, which is best for calming, soothing, and anti-aging. There are other devices with blue light, but I think blue light, what I'm learning is that it can be useful, but also potentially irritate or worsen pigmentation. So blue light I do like for breakouts because I do find it's effective that way, but generally I try not to use it and I find that the red light is all I really need. There's also a lot of science on the different wavelengths of LED masks. Vanessa on Instagram, Goals to Get Glowing, has a great blog post breaking it all down. And this mask does use some of the most effective wavelengths of red light. I've also used hard shell LED masks that I do really like, but I have very high and wide cheekbones and they never, they always felt like they squished my cheekbones a little bit. This one will fit all face shapes. Um, I also have the little eye protectors in right now because I like to protect my eyes from the light. You don't have to use them, but I try to. Um, and yeah, it's just an easy device to use and I like the passive experience of it, but I've also noticed the benefits in terms of calming inflammation, calming redness. I also don't have to charge it very often. I'm able to use it many, many times without having to charge it all the time. So that's great too. Again, you know, when it comes to skincare devices, I have to take my own laziness into account because it is an investment. And so you have to think of it as an investment in terms of cost per use. And if you're not actually going to realistically use it that much, it's just going to sit there. So that's why I like a passive experience like this LED mask. So that is everything for me. That's my best skincare of 2022. I would love to hear what your favorite skincare has been this year. If there's anything you think I should try, any standouts to you, any standout brands or products, let me know. And of course, stay tuned for best makeup best hair care, body care, fragrance, all of that is coming. And if you enjoyed this, I would love for you to subscribe. 
Um, I do like these big roundup videos, obviously, but I do lots of other kinds of videos as well. So I'd love to see you again. And thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.